Are you ready for the Word of God this morning? Yes. We're in a series called Built to Build. How many of you know God has created us to build with Him? Yes. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 4 says, For every house has a builder, but the one who built everything is God. So God is a builder. He built everything, but He also expects you to build your house. For every house has a builder. Your house must have a builder, and, um, but you got to understand that everything that we have is built by God. Amen. Today I want to talk to you about building your belief system. Okay. Building your belief system. It's not going to be an easy message, so you got to keep up. But as you know, my assignment is to make hard things easy. We're going to read two scriptures, Matthew 12, 35, and then Proverbs 4, 23 and 24. And here's what Jesus said. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. What is the treasury of the good heart? It's the hard drive. It's the collection of something. It's a treasury. What is a treasury? It's a collection of money, right? A collection of something. All right? So every good person produces good things from the hard drive of his good heart. And every evil person produces evil things from the hard drive of an evil heart. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23 and 24. Guard your hard drive of your heart. <laughs> Above all else, if you're going to guard, we guard our homes, we guard our cars, vehicles. But it says here, guard your heart above all else. Huh. For it determines the course of your life. As children are born, they are born with a clean slate, without any beliefs, without any knowledge, truth, fear, no ideas, no experience, no wisdom. They're born clean. But in the first five years of a child, how many of you know their brain is getting developed? Actually, science tells us that 85% plus of the human brain is developed in the first five years. Let me ask you a question. How many of you remember what happened in first five years of your life. Actually, the first thing I remember about my life was, and, and I know some of you will say, I remember things when I'm one year old. Uh, okay, I believe you. I have no reason not to. But for most people, usually we start remembering things at about five years old. I remember when my mom took me to school for the first time. We walked by this beautiful fountain. It was a warm fall um, uh, evening. It was golden hour, around 4.35 or something like that. She took me, in, and I still remember the colors going to, into that school. And they told me, sorry, you were born on September 9th, so you have to, uh, you're, you don't qualify. <laughs> you have to wait another year. I was so disappointed, and, and that's what I remember. Uh, and then after we left uh, school, I said, Mom, can I jump in into the pond and swim? <laughs> That's what I remember, you guys. First memories. But what about those things that I don't remember? Are they lost? No. They are recorded in the subconscious mind or what the Bible calls the heart. They're still there. All the memories, all the knowledge, all the experience that you have had in this life, every word you have spoken is recorded on the hard drive of your heart. That's why Jesus says, out of a good, out of the treasury, your heart or your subconscious mind, 
is a treasury of all the things of who you are. Your sins, your good things, your words, your experience, all those things are in your heart. And that's what I called your belief system. I'm not talking about religion today. I'm talking about a human's belief system. Okay? Where is it collected? It's collected in our heart. I want to show you a, a, a picture of a conscious mind and subconscious mind. And here's what science tells us about it. Do we have it uh, available? If we could put it up. It says here, notice, conscious mind is 5% of the things you do daily. And subconscious mind is 95%. Leave that uh, picture there. Your unconscious, or what the Bible calls your heart, is a treasury of all those things. It's much more complicated than we have been made to believe. A guy on the internet who is a neuroscientist, I did a little bit of research, and he said our subconscious mind is a million times more complicated than our conscious mind. I don't know if million is just a number he threw to show us how big it is, or it's actually been, how can you calculate the heart? And so our conscious mind is responsible for a few things during the day. But how many of you drive, and you don't drive like thinking about how am I going to do it? In the beginning you do, but once you learn how to drive, you don't even think about it. How do you eat? Do you remember chewing and things like that? You don't. You just do it. All those things. Breathing. That's a subconscious mind activity. Walking. I, I'm not thinking about walking right now. I asked my wife, I said, why do you think God created us like that, that our conscious mind would be 5% and subconscious mind would be 95%? And she said, uh, which was very smart, she said, because we wouldn't be able to handle all the information consciously at one time. We would be like Superman. Remember Superman came to earth and suddenly he had sensory overload. Do you remember that, Superman? Until he learns to control his sensory and people who have sensory overload it's hard for them to live in this world because too many noises too many colors too many sounds and they're just distracted and and it's hard for them to function because too many things that's why God designed us that way that we have subconscious or the heart and it does a lot of work it's almost an AI of our system I, mean, I told you we are a machine created by God we, you are an, a machine, an amazing. David says, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, and my soul knows that very well. Okay? So um, your belief system is stored in a treasury of your heart. Your belief system is stored in the treasury of your heart. Heart is what shapes you, decisions you make, the choices that you make, your belief system will build you up or tear you down. Your belief system will build up your life or your belief system will destroy your life. Beliefs create and beliefs destroy. And that's why we have to pay attention to the condition of our heart. We do. We have to pay attention. Let me give you an example. My dad, when he would get frustrated, he would yell at me. <laughs> My dad's dad, when he would get frustrated, he would yell at him. Guess what I'm doing? When I get frustrated, I yell at my son or daughter. And guess what my son is doing when he gets frustrated? Yells at somebody, mom or sister, you know, or me sometimes. And I'm like, whoa, bro, no. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> but you notice your belief system is the treasury that's been collected over the years inside of your heart. And so you say, I'm going to be kind today. And then you put under stress. 
and what comes out? What's in the treasury of your heart. I don't want to sin no more. <laughs> and then you're put in a situation where you're allowed to sin again. And what happens? What's out of your heart comes out. So sin is the symptom. Sin is the symptom. And that's why Pastor Andre said, David cried out to God and he said, Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and remove and, 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 and put a, step, a right spirit within me. David understood that, yes, you can focus on the sin part of your life and you'll, con you'll, you'll be continually tripped by it. Or you can say, God, I understand that my condition is deeper than just my actions. There's a root to my actions, and that's the treasury of my heart is impure. The treasury, the storeroom, my AI is dirty and sinful. And before, after you get angry, and it's okay to get angry sometimes. Come on, somebody. Like there's a reason God gave a lion a roar. Like there's a reason. He, he, just by roaring, he, he makes everything in balance again in the kingdom, <laughs> in the animal kingdom, right? Sometimes a man needs to roar in his house just to put things in order, right? <laughs> but when it's just a regular default, whenever you're stressed out, you roar, then you got a problem. And the problem is not the roar itself. I just imagine clipping lions um, roar vocal cords and he's oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and just chaos erupts in his own pride. Because yeah. by roaring he can put things in order immediately. Yeah. Okay? Um, yeah, sometimes when one of my kids would disrespect their mom, guess what? Dad would on purpose roar. And then it just immediately put things in order. Like, no, you don't treat your mom like that, right? Yes. So roar is needed sometimes. Yes. God gave us roar. <laughs> Some of you are like, oh no, we should never. Well, he would be a woman if he wouldn't, you know, be a man. <laughs> just let a man be a man and a woman be a woman. Okay, all right. So your heart is that un unconscious mind. If I could paint a picture today in your mind about what your conscious mind and a heart is. Your heart is like an elephant. And your conscious mind is like a mouse. In comparison. All right? A mouse can scare an elephant. But as soon as mouse you know, goes and takes a break, guess what the elephant does? Goes back to the path that he's always been to. Conscious mind says, I'm going to lose weight this year, 2024. I'm going to go to the gym. <laughs> and you even sign up for a year. That's how the gyms survive. You sign up for a year. <laughs> and you don't go <laughs> like more than three times. <laughs> I've paid for so much gym. I never signed up, but you know who did. <laughs> I told her she, she needs to preach once in a while. She could get me back, but she said, I'm not called. So I'm like, okay. Uh, but people sign up, right? To, 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 and, and they mean it. How many of you know people mean it? They don't just do it for, but what happens is as soon as you let go or as soon as you get, have a bad day, the elephant comes in and says, nope, we've always done it this way. After you eat a good steak, you say, that's it. I need to stop eating so much. <laughs> and then you're hungry again at lunch. And what do you do? What you have always done. Your belief system. Your belief system. 
That's what has to change. That's what has to change. Now let me talk to you about our belief system a little more. Our natural default system or programming or our belief system is usually doubt, fear, and self-sabotage. Have you ever said to somebody, you don't believe me? As soon as something happened, you had a disagreement. Why don't you believe me? That tells me about your heart, the, what's coming out of your heart. For example, have you ever said, I'm not good enough. God does not love me. Maybe you didn't say it, but you felt it, and you still feel it today. I am not forgiven. I am a POS. I'll never be rich. I'll always be in poverty. I will always. Maybe you didn't say it, but that's how you feel. I will never get out of debt. I will never be comfortable where I don't have to worry about money. That's your belief system speaking. That's your belief system speaking. Is it true? But that's what you believe. It's true for you. It's true for you. Most of us are not conscious of what our belief system is doing. And so we focus on the symptom, a sin, right? And we forget that there is an elephant that is controlling this whole life. That is an autopilot that's controlling your whole life. We're not the only ones who have this negative setting. Moses, when he encountered the Lord at the burning bush, God says, I'm going to send you to Egypt, and I need you to deliver people of Israel out of bondage. What was his response? I can't. Notice, our default is what? Negative. Even when we encounter the Lord, even when the Lord tells us something, we still say, I can't. When God says something to you, about you, you should believe that, right? Moses says, no, 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 I can't. I can't speak. I stutter. And God says, I don't care. Your capacity is so much greater than what you believe about yourself, but your belief system is limiting you from accessing that capacity. In 1950s, they did, a, uh, in Harvard, there was a Professor Richard something, Dr. Richard something, he did a th thing with rats. He would put them in a bucket of water. Do you remember that story? I told that story before, but I love it. They, and and uh, a mouse would swim uh, for about 15 minutes and then drown. Okay? So they put an another, not mouse, but a rat. They put another rat, and right before he drowned, like at 14, 58 seconds, 14 minutes, 58 seconds, they pulled him out, dried him up, you know, made him comfortable, then put him back in the bucket. Guess how many minutes he survived then? 60 hours. 15 minutes and 60 hours. The capacity... Why, why was he able to do this? Why was the rat able to survive 60 hours versus 15 minutes? Hope and belief that somebody is probably going to rescue me any, any minute. So, the belief system, one belief system, first 15 minutes, only gives him strength for 15 minutes. But belief system that believes that, no, somebody's going to rescue me, gives them how many times more strength, if somebody could calculate it. That would be great. 60 hours versus 15 minutes. And how many of us give up so quickly because our belief system is so weak? Because our belief system is so wrong. When God calls Jeremiah, do you remember that story? In Jeremiah 1, 
He says, um, I have called you to be a prophet. You will go and tear down and build up and you'll speak to the kings and things like that. Jeremiah says, I can't do that. I'm a youth. I don't know, maybe 14 years old, 15, 12 years old, when God calls Jeremiah. And God says, don't say you're a youth because you will go wherever I tell you to go. And you will say whatever I tell you to say. And you will build up and tear down and plant and uproot. And, and you're going to do crazy things. Although Jeremiah had no miracles, but his words that he spoke are powerful. Changed the nation. God really spoke through him. Esther says, I can't go to the king. I was not invited. And her, her uncle, the Murde Mordecai, says... Your destiny is to go. And if you don't go, you will perish just like they. But if you go, how do you know that God wouldn't do a miracle? And how do you know God didn't put you in this place for such a time as this? Your belief system needs to change. Your belief system needs to change. Matthew 12 35 again. Let's let's read that. Matthew 12 35. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. My treasury has to be replaced with something else. You guys. And can I tell you today that our generation is in such danger because our treasury is being filled by social media by the news stations, by the music, by TikTok, by short videos. And uh, that's filling our treasury of the heart. What do you think we're going to produce? Right. We're filling our treasury with garbage. In 1990s, when the computers were created, first became popular among consumers, they said this phrase, garbage in and garbage out. If you put garbage in your computer, that's what's going to come out. If you put garbage in your subconscious mind, that's what's going to come out. That's why I don't care what you say. In, I'm talking to myself. I don't care what I say, how good intentions I have, how I really repentant and I want to change if the heart does not change, I will keep repeating the same old pattern. And I will hate myself for it. I will not watch pornography, and then you go and watch pornography. I will not drink another drink again, and then you go back, because that's the coming out of the treasury of your heart. Elephant and a mouse. A mouse can scare an elephant to go one way for a short period of time. But eventually, the elephant will find his way back to the same old thing, the autopilot. So many of you are wondering right now, and those of you who are watching us online, thank you for watching us. Uh, how? How do I change my belief system? How do I build my belief system to produce what I wanted to produce. And um, I want to give you a few answers here this morning. And that is the power of repetition. How many of you know life and death is truly in the power of your tongue? And I'm not talking repetition of how the world says affirmations. I'm talking about confessing the Word of God and getting inside of you. Amen. You guys, true story. My mom never said she loved me. I, not that I heard it, ever. <laughs> My dad probably never said that either, but at least he shows it. You know, he, she, uh, he hugs me as soon as I comes in, come in. But my mom never did. So I grew up thinking the same thing about God. God doesn't love me. Somehow he saved me because he had mercy on me. You know, kind of like out of pity, like, yeah, let's save Alex, yeah. <laughs> let's save that mother chucker, you know. 
But boy, he's, uh, you know, he, he's one of those monkey types, you know, just gets into it, spazzes out, and, and, you know, just, yeah, let's save him because, you know, mercy. Let's show him mercy. I was thinking like an orphan, that I'm barely, I have to, I have to perform in order for God to love me. And then one day I heard many years ago the verse that God loves me as much as he loves Jesus. And I don't know how I get to this conclusion, but I started repeating it. I started saying it to, my, started saying it to myself, God loves me as much as he loves Jesus. And it was months and months and months have passed by until finally one day a miracle happened. I believed what I was saying. And today, something shifted in my heart. If I fall short, if I sin, I always look like through the lens of I'm a son. And so he loves me because I'm his. And so yes, I have to change still. But he never stops loving me just because I fail almost every day but you know I fall short he doesn't stop loving me but my subconscious my my AI former AI was plain that God doesn't love you he tolerates you and you better behave but now I'm like I'm a son I have to behave because I am a son I don't want to embarrass my father but it's not like I have to behave to gain his love no I am loved you know you're loved. What can separate us from the love of God? The answer is nothing. <laughs> but many of you today, you don't believe it because you don't like yourself. Your, your, your subconscious default mode is negative about yourself. And so you think God is the same thing about you. And so Satan comes in, and now it's easy pathways for him to easily whisper something to you because you already believe it. <laughs> you have to build your belief system. When you're little, your parents build your belief system. When you're little, your school builds your belief system. Careful about sending your kids to college because they'll build their satanic belief system make sure you know what college you're paying for your children or they'll come back and say you're stupid you're killing the environment and you're paying for their food for their rent for their car for their insurance and for their tuition and they call you stupid <laughs> this happens a lot because somebody else was able to change in four years their belief system if I talk to people who go to college, the first thing they make you take is psychology. And that's where they really work on your belief system. They want to get God out of your belief system. They want to get the truth out of your belief system and fill your mind with many different ideas. Questioning, questioning, questioning. Always learning, Paul says, but never coming to the knowledge of truth. Always learning, always searching for more truth, but never getting to it. And so you're more confused for what you believe. To the point where you now believe that there's 50 genders. To the point, it's true, that you believe that a man could become a woman and a woman can become a man. And, you, and you're like, how did you came to that conclusion? That's not scientific. I thought... College was all about science. <laughs> I believe there's only two genders, but I believe you can, your belief system could be warped yeah. to where you believe you are a woman when you are a man. Yes. Some of it is demonic possession too. Some of it is demonic possession. It's to the confusion of the mind. It's demonic spirits. It's, a, it's, it's multiple personalities. Right? You have a personality of a dog and a cat. And uh, that's why you need kitty litter one day. You need, <laughs> you need to go to the park and lift up your leg and, and uh, you know, do the thing. You know what I mean? I believe there could be multiple personalities. 
But that's mental illness. And if you're struggling with this, I'm not laughing at you. You can find the truth. And you can be set free. And you can have children. And you can be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth, have dominion. You can do all that that God said about you. You know, they're talking about population collapse in many countries. That's why we're allowing so many illegal immigrants. Because we are having population collapse. Because we killed so many babies. And we need for economy to keep growing. We need people. Do you know that Putin said that every woman in Russia should have eight children? <laughs> he knows that the country is collapsing. More old people than young people who can produce and invent and create. Obviously, he wants an army too. <laughs> and so we are importing people because our blue cities are being emptied out because people are fleeing blue cities and coming to the red cities, right? People are fleeing California, going to Texas, Florida. People are fleeing New York. They're leaving these big cities and going to these places. So who's going to replace those people? Let's bust them in. <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. You want to save the country? Have a lot of children. And don't let somebody else put their belief system in them. Some of you are like, well, private Christian school is a lot. We can't afford it. You can't not afford it. Because your children are going to be brainwashed. And how many of you know after high school, we lose about 90% of the kids in churches? And especially if they go to college, we lose so many of them. Huge, I don't know the exact, so don't quote me, but not exact percentage, but somebody else is putting a belief system in them. And in church, we played games. Kids, not in this church. Obviously, we teach our kids the best that we can. But you, you only have 45 minutes or so to an hour. That is not enough. And so parents have to, if you want them to have a belief system, you have to put that belief system in them. You know what the Word of God is? It's a God's belief system for those who believe. <laughs> it's God's belief system. And some of you are like, you don't take church and the Bible seriously enough, I don't think. We, we, we don't. It's important. Because your, what you put in will come out. Out of the, let's put that verse and just leave it there, Matthew, out of the a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart, of that hard drive, right? The collection of things. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of the evil heart. And so the question today is, how do you change your belief system? Number one is, I said, repetition of the Word of God. The Word of God is living and powerful and sharper the two-edged sword penetrating to where the division of soul and spirit bone and marrow how do they know this now we know the information is held in our bones and in our marrow science tells us that how did they know 2000 years ago how did paul know revelation the Bible is revelation. Science is catching up with all this stuff. So it could be trusted, you guys. It could be trusted. And so repetition. When I began to repeat that God loves me as much as he loves Jesus, and I would say it, and I would believe it, and it took discipline, you guys. Because nobody naturally goes around and says, God loves me as much as he loves Jesus. God. The Creator loves me as much as He loves Jesus. Like, there's no greater love than loving Jesus. And He loves me with the same love. That's John 17, 23. That's the Word of God. This morning, 
Dennis and Thomas helped me understand this. Uh, we kind of came up with this idea together that fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And I asked them a question. I said, what tree do these fruits grow on? And then we answered it together, I believe, and we said, the tree is the truth. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus said, my words are truth. Jesus said, my word is spirit and life. You got to fill your treasury with the truth, spirit, and life. That's the tree. The fruit that grows upon the tree, the fruit that that tree produces of truth is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. You can focus on the kindness. You know, the world says, just be kind. It's everywhere. How? How? I can be kind when I'm not under pressure. When everything is going great, I'm kind. Put me under pressure and watch. I'm mean. I'm angry. What happens when you are put under pressure? What comes out? The only thing comes out that was in there. Not what your mouth said, but what the elephant said. That what comes out. Out of the treasury of the heart. You squeeze, and out of the treasury of the heart, what comes out. And so, my prayer today is, God, help me. Build the treasury of my heart. I'm adult now. I'm a conscious human being. St. Paul says, don't be transformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So second step is renewing of the mind. To what? Renewing to what? To this. That's why you got to study this. That's why you got to be a student of this. And sometimes the Bible is complicated and the truth are hidden or sprinkled all over. So sometimes you have to go and search, do word search of the Bible. So you can understand what, what things, each thing says. You got to come join us every Sunday. You got to uh, st- uh, join Living Free. Men, I want to talk to you. We're starting a group just for men. Women are not allowed. And it's a group about the things all men struggle with. I'm not going to say what it is, because some of you are like, I'm not going. You need to be there. We're talking about what all men struggle with. Sign-ups, I believe, are already in the lobby. You can sign up. If you struggle with that thing that like 80 or 90% of men struggle with here, sign up, because they're going to go to the root. Belief system has to change. Repetition is powerful. I am blessed. I am blessed. God loves me. I am anointed. I am favored by God. God loves me. People love me. Not everybody, but I'm still loved, you know? So, number one, how do you change your belief system? It's repetition. I can do all things through Christ. As soon as you feel like, I just can't do that, I just can't, I just can't, that's a belief system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. That's a belief system. Negative. Notice I can't. What did Jesus rebuke his disciples for the most? Unbelief, doubt, and fear. That's your natural default mode. That's my natural. I think it's because of sin. It's our natural default mode. You can build your belief system. You don't have to say, well, I'll just go with the flow and whatever happens, happens. The world will build its belief system in you. Your sinful nature will build its belief system in you. So it's work and discipline. I wish I could give you easy pill. Actually, there is an easy pill. But it's unpredictable. Sometimes I say this phrase, and I heard it from somebody else, that says, 
One word from God can change your life. Yeah. Have you heard that? Yeah. So, um, I was struggling with fear for like 25 years in, some er in one area. And I was praying, God, deliver me from this fear. I'm sick and tired of this. Constantly nagging, you know, constantly pulling me down. That's negativity, that's fear, doubt, and unbelief. And one day I have a dream. And in the dream, the angel of the Lord speaks to me without saying a word, through mind. And the angel of the Lord says to me, don't you know I was commanded to protect you? That's what I heard. And when I woke up, something changed. It's like something, somebody came in and did surgery on me at night for, to my heart. I wish it happened like that all the time. Those things are unpredictable. So don't wait for the unpredictable. There's predictable things you can do in order to change and shift your belief system. And that's repetition of the truth. Not just confession of, or, or not just affirmation that I'm a good person, I'm a good person. No, you're not. <laughs> but the truth is you're loved and you can do all things. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And all that I have, the Father says, are yours. Don't, don't, don't do world ways of, of changing your belief system. There's God's way, and the Word of God is so powerful. Yes. It goes deep, and it changes you from the inside. Yes. That's why I can force you to change your sin, maybe for temporary. You can force yourself to change and not sin temporarily, or you can change your belief system, or you can build a new treasury. Amen. Hallelujah. So, how do you change your belief system? Write this down. Repetition. Meditation on the Word of God. Or revelation. That's, that's when it's supernatural. It just happens. You don't have to do anything. Have you ever received anything from the Lord? You didn't have to do anything. You just caught it almost like. Like he spoke to you and you got it and it changed you. I wish it happened all the time like that. I wish it did. I mean, that would be awesome. But sometimes God wants us to, <laughs> it depends on his word, and uh, maybe d practice some discipline as well. Hallelujah. All right, I'm two minutes over. Are you guys still cold? Because I'm not cold no more. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, you're not. Were you blessed today by this message? You were created to build, build your belief system. Let's pray. Father God, I pray that the eyes, eyes of our understanding would be open. I pray that the eyes of our heart would be open today. So we can see you, so we can know you. We want to be like you, Jesus. You are the ultimate Superman. We want to be like you. Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. We want to imitate Christ. We want to act like the children whose father is God. Holy Spirit, I ask today that you would do in the hearts of those brave people who came to church today, something that they've been trying to do for so long, I pray through revelation, you would transform them. I know all of us, we want to. We just don't have the willpower. We just don't have the strength. But your Holy Spirit can do in one moment what can take us a lifetime. And so today, we submit to your will. We surrender to you, and we say, Holy Spirit, do the work in us today. Change us. We, won't, we want to be like you, Jesus. We pray this in your name, and the people of God said, Amen. 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 
Thanks for tuning in to New Life Sermon Series Online. If you're blessed by these messages and are interested in helping spread the Word of God to others, make an investment today. You can give at newlifechurchsf.org. If you have a story or a testimony to share, let us know on our website as well. We hope you have a blessed day and enjoy today's message by Pastor Alex.